There's a bit of a misnomer in the title, which is that these problems, they're not prickly at all. I just wanted another, I just wanted more alliteration, so I just, I just threw it in. Um, probability problems, like I said, there's no set of algorithm, there's not an algorithm, there's a set of steps. Do these six steps and you will sketch your curve and it will have all the features you need on it. Probability is not like that. You just have to think of it carefully and use these principles that are kind of going to overarching, help you know what tools to use and all that kind of thing. Okay, so for starters, anywhere in chance of probability, right? Please, I know this is a bit of an obvious thing for you guys, um, but construct something, anything that will justify your answer. Will justify your answer. Very frequently, your answer is just a fraction, okay? And sometimes that fraction, you'll just like you just write it down, and that'll be it. But there will be two marks on the question. Why? And the answer is they're looking for what you used to arrive at that fraction. Okay. Um, if you see, and this is um, more relevant to two unit than extension one probability, but if you see a question and it's only got a really small number of possibilities, like say six or twelve, okay, sometimes the simplest way is don't do, bless you, don't do some huge, um, um, enormous diagram. Just list the things out. They're not meant to be, not meant to be crazy. Some questions will say, show that there are six ways to do this. And all they mean is, can you just write them down? Can you list what the six ways are? Uh, and they will only ask for a list of that kind if there's going to be a small list. Okay. Um, a disproportionate number of chance of probability questions have to do with a pair of dice. <laughs> That's because they're so easy to work with. And um, it's kind of like that sweet spot between, you know, if you think about changing the uh, metaphor for a second, if you think about polynomials, okay, linear functions, linear polynomials are super boring. Okay. Cubic polynomials are really, really hard. You can't even, without the quadratic formula, um, you can't even necessarily find all the roots. Even with the quadratic formula, sometimes you're a bit stuck. But quadratics, degree two, it's kind of this really nice spot in the middle where it's challenging, but it's accessible. And two dice are exactly like that. Okay. So the way to do two dice questions are always with a dot diagram or with a grid, and I'll show you how to construct one of those if you can't remember. Okay, if you've got a multi-stage event, like two or three things are happening in sequence, okay, then do yourself a favor, construct a tree diagram, make it <coughs> nice and big, like just like your graphs, a third of a page is a good guideline, if not more, sometimes. And uh, make sure you label each branch with the probability of each of those individual events, okay? Now, just a quick reminder, when you've got lots of things happening at the same time, remember I said, the hardest maths you'll be doing in probability is add and multiply, okay? Now the question is, when do you add? When do you multiply? When you've got the tree diagram, and we'll, we'll draw some in a second, you multiply along the branches, okay? Because if you are tracking along branches, what you have is events that are all happening together, right? Whereas, if, you've gone, if you're going down the branches, right, you're actually thinking about events that are not happening together, okay? So it's like, I either pick two boys or I pick two girls, right? You may like to add on to there, I forgot. Um, the words that go with these are and or or, right? If you've got or, these things aren't happening together, right? If you've got and, then they are, so you multiply. There's a really easy way to think about, like, if you get confused as to which one is which, and the easy way is just to think about one of these, right? So if I said to you, okay, what's the probability that I get two tails in a row? Just think about that simple, simple question, okay? And then think about which of these it will mean. Now, the probability of getting a single tail, obviously, is a half, right? It's like, well, if I have two heads in a row, am I going to add a half and a half, or am I going to multiply a half and a half? So you said this is the wrong word. Okay, uh, did I? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Am I going to multiply or am I going to add? Now, clearly, you can't add these together because then the probability of getting two tails is 100% every time. That would be amazing. Always bet on tails. And then you're like, wait, what about three tails? 150% chance. That doesn't make sense. Okay. So these events are, are clearly happening together. That's why you must multiply, right? So it would be a half times a half. That's why there's only a 25% chance. Okay. So... Think about a simple event, and then think about which principle you're going to use. Again, if they're happening together, multiply across. If they're happening separately, then add them up. Okay? So I'm going to pause there. Does anyone ask any questions on that? Wait, so you said that 
Wait, but you can't get two heads at the same time on one coin. Okay, so I'm talking about if multiple things are happening, so like a multi-stage event. So if I, if I, for instance, if I flipped two coins, uh, there you go. Okay, I can't, I can't flip two coins, and I certainly can't catch two coins. So if I flip both of these at the same time, okay, I mean, there's a first coin will be my first set of branches, and then my second coin will be my next set of branches after that. And I'm going to have to multiply a half on this one and a half on this one. That gives me yes. a quarter. Okay, so okay. what coins am I doing? If you do do like one coin and then another coin. Yeah, so that's why um, that's why I've got inverted commas over this simultaneous word because when we talk about a multiple stage event, we're thinking about like even if I have a single coin and I flip it once and then I flip it again, okay? I think of that as one entire event. So I think about them happening together, even though chronologically there's like five seconds between one and then the other. It's like that double coin flip was a single event. Okay, and there are four different ways to do it. <laughs> okay, so a separate event might be um, flipping two heads or flipping two tails, right? They can't happen at the same time. I can't have two heads and two tails unless you. Don't tell me. Okay, um, so, so I'm thinking about two coins, right? So therefore, I can't have them both at the same time, right? So that's why it's like this or that, and you'd add up, right? So a question might be, what's the probability? of flipping the same face twice, right? When I flip two coins. And it'd be like, well, heads, heads, or tails, tails. And I'm gonna add those up. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, last thing, jack down the bottom. If the question says to you, okay, here's like 12 people, okay? 10 of them are doing this, and five of them are doing that. 12 people, 10 and five. When you see an inconsistent number, or numbers that don't add up, what that tells you is that things are overlapping, right? So just make a Venn diagram, a really, really simple one, and then use that to count up what's going on. I'll show you how to do that, okay?